Hello, I'm Lainey Merriam for Grimfest, and we are here with the director and producer of Moon Garden. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Ryan Stevens-Harris. I'm the writer-director of Moon Garden. And I'm John Michael Elfer, the producer. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the film? What is Moon Garden about? So Moon Garden is a uh, 35 millimeter dark fantasy indie epic. Um, it's about a little girl who's caught in the middle of a dysfunctional family and there's a terrible domestic accident that plunges her into this dream world which she has to find her way uh, following uh, her mother's voice on this old transistor radio uh, to find her way out of um, this, this nightmarish uh, dreamscape. So. Oh yeah, I mean our, our pitch from the beginning was like a dark industrial Alice in Wonderland. That's the quickest way to say it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I've already got an image in my head when I yeah, when I hear yeah. that, so that's a perfect description. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the visuals, because you haven't seen the film yet, and we don't want to spoil anything, obviously, but it's a visually absolutely stunning, fantastical journey of a film. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about those aesthetics that you use in the film. Oh my gosh, that's great. So we dealt a lot, one of the main things we were trying to do is with uh, dream logic. So to tether, to tether her journey in the dream world to what she's going through in real life. So we used a lot of different tricks. Um, one of the biggest things is obviously we shot on a 35 millimeter film, but it's not just that. We shot on an expired film stock that we actually dug out, the, the majority of the film stock we dug out of a basement in the American Midwest. Yeah. So you're talking about this, this, this high grain um, 80s film stock that we really wanted the movie to look like uh, a film that was discovered in an attic somewhere, thrown up on a projector and then suddenly played. Like the movie's always been there, it just needed to be excavated or uncovered. Timeless. T yeah, timeless. There's no phones. There's there's none of this new contemporary technology. It was very important for the movie to be able to exist in that way. Uh, we used a lot of we used miniatures, um, forced perspective, photography. We shot the nighttime skies using uh, cloud tanks. Everything for the movie was created by hand. There's uh, no CGI in the film. All of the visual effects, you're talking over 700 visual effects shots, all of the visual effects are simple comps with real practical elements that we photographed on film and then just put together. And so some of the sequences, you know, the well sequence in particular. That's a great example. Some of the sequences had, you know, five, six different locations where we shot at a miniature, the top of the well, inside the well, where we built this old, we built out of an old uh, 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 dried out pool. Um, so it, it was just a real labor of love and uh, you know John and I just built it from the ground up and we're just lucky that we had the the talent with Haven, Augie, Brian to kind of fill that world and, and give it a, the heart that it needed because it is a very visual aesthetic, aesthetically dense movie. Yeah, and like you said, it's not just about the visuals, but it has a lot of heart. And you just mentioned Haven. Haven's the little girl who also plays the protagonist in the film, and she really carries this film. But I found out after watching, um, because I want to give her credit as an actress first, this beautiful little girl is your daughter. Yes. How yeah. did how did you? I mean, I understand based on her skill why she'd be in the film. Yeah. But but how did you end up casting her for it? There's, a, I mean, that's a really long answer. The the short part is is she's just she's always had this kind of uh, angelic look to her. So she was just so photogenic. We started off shooting Moon Garden as a short film, as a proof of concept for a larger piece. It was totally silent. And we just had her as this conduit, this very photogenic young little girl making her way through this dark forest. But she was just so natural on camera and she would walk into these, you know, dark rooms. Film sets are kind of intimidating. She would walk into these dark rooms with, you know, these yeah, intense guys all over the place. Yeah. You're talking 35 millimeter cameras, hundreds of pounds. You know, gigantic. Yeah, yeah, some of the lenses we were shooting on looked like you know, uh, uh, cannons and she would just, walk right up, fell right into it. The biggest thing is we tried to, we always, we always let her know that it, we were playing pretend. We would build the sets out so she could come and just have this playground. We were always playing pretend, but we wanted to make it real. So we're playing pretend, but we're gonna do our best to make it real. 
And I felt like she latched into that just instinctively. And I do think that's rare for an actor and actress. It helps to be photogenic. It helps to be photogenic, but it's really, really rare, I think, to just be so instinctive and to just uh, uh, follow follow uh, the, the path inside and for it to be correct and to read on camera in such a way. A lot of the movie doesn't have any dialogue, so it was really important for her to be able to communicate with her eyes, intention, and um, and all the little nuance that, that a performance like that needs. So. I absolutely agree. Again, no spoilers, but there were scenes where I felt like I was struggling because she portrayed so well uh, what was going on. I was like, yeah. is she going to be okay? Was this little girl okay after this? Yeah. But, you know, fantastic. You know, I said even yeah. some parts, it was a, a real I'm not crying, you're crying moment. So, yeah, fantastic. Uh, my last question I'd like to ask is, what target audience do you think this film is for? If you were going to recommend this to someone, oh. what kind of person would you recommend this to? Yeah, I mean, fans of Guillermo del Toro. Um, we, there's a lot of influences that we love, that we grew up with. Uh, Terry Gilliam. Um, I mean, yeah. but also, you know, I mean, things that skew darker, like Clive Barker. A lot of people have made Clive Barker comparisons, even like... Um, Tim Burton, who yeah. else has been met? My, yeah. we, we talked a lot about, especially doing the production design, about Brothers Coy and yeah. Jan Svenkmeyer and stop motion artists like that. Uh, we, again, wanted it to have this, the artifice pushed forward. So when we built the miniatures, it wasn't that important that it was like super photo real. We just needed it to be tactile enough that you could reach out and touch it. And that's, again, why, yeah. like, uh, that's how it feels when you watch like a stop motion movie. You know it's not totally real, but the fact that you can reach out and touch it is what makes it feel like what makes you believe it, and you fall into the the spell of the world. Um, also, uh, the Jean Pierre Genet yes. with City of Lost yeah. Children. Um, yeah. But uh, often people would ask me about the tone, and I always went back to the Svankmeyer movie Alice. Uh, just the fact that you know the little girl barely talks, you know, and if we sympathize and we're with her then I think that th that kind of thing can carry the story. So, yeah. Well, you heard it here. I'm uh, Lady Mariam for Grimfest. Moon Garden is a fantastical adventure film with dark elements and a real journey to take you on. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out Moon Garden. And uh, that's all for now from Grimfest. And follow us at Moon Garden Film on Instagram. Thank you. Cheers.